Good morning, Mr. Lennon. Good morning. <laughs> and I'm sure the clerk will reset the clock. And just one. There, sh there okay. you go. Now, this is a different case. Yeah, on this one, this is a serious one. And um, I, there's other issues that I don't want to bring up on this topic because it's, this is the George Pagantis topic. So I wrote up a um, document, um, say, to the Constitution of Massachusetts, Part 2, Chapter 3, Article 2, um, that the court can solicit briefs and comments from interested persons. Me, as an interested person, will want to present this to the court at the end? You may certainly file it with the clerk. Okay. And that won't be on this case. This is just, that's just a separate document. Um, okay. Now, on this case, from day one, me and my daughter Jade were at the Law Library, and um, I came across this law, which I think you guys might have seen, was in the briefs. And it basically tells the whole thing, strict liability for abnormal dangerous activity. Okay, you know, we have, you know, I lived in that place and there was very unhealthy with chemicals coming in through whatever means George began to chose to use, which I'm pretty sure I knew, I figured out. But it states, um, you know, that it's, this is not a criminal act either. This is just environmental law, like a company trying to make a dollar and they happen to be spraying chemicals on metal or whatever and it happens to injure people. And the court wants to look at this very seriously, you know, as, you know, um, like it says, if someone is strong enough to mimic the worth of God, then he ought to be generous enough to mimic the mercy of God. So, you know, my whole case basically with Pagantis was... I formed around this because this, we have no laws for these kind of acts when they're criminal acts. And um, so, you know, all I can ask you, like in this other document, will say is to take this in consideration, but to consider it as a, as a criminal act. And we need, as people, we need criminal um, laws wrote to fit these kind of acts because we really don't have that on the books. And, um, you know, in my studies, you know, I came across a lot of different papers with spy dust during the time my mother died, which is very suspicious death, which is starting to tell me questions about how long this stuff has been going on. And this other document, which is in the briefs, is all the same kind of act that happened in um, Lemonster. And there's evidence in the courts and the federal level <coughs> which shows a pattern of, you know, this thing continuing. And I know environmental law, you know, if it continues on, it even becomes a more um, stricter violation. And then, um, right here we have a document um, that I had, when I was in Lemonster, that I had to take to the courts about a traffic guy coming at me when I pulled out a little, and he come out from behind two cars, two trucks parked in a little car, I couldn't see him, on the side of the road, not on the road, but on the, um, on the, um, you know, not even just whatever. And as soon as I went to pull out, when there was no traffic coming, I looked back to the left as I'm pulling to the left, and I see him come out and I stop right away. He came out from behind those trucks, shifting his little car at high speeds coming at me, and my um, girlfriend that was pregnant at the time with the baby that was injured from these kind of acts, unborn. And um, I basically was denied access to the courts over this. But now my brother has a very suspicious accident on the highway up in Lemonster, which is points to very questionable issues. And um, now back to the Pagantis issue. On the case, you know, I filed the evidence. There's more than enough evidence to prove the, the issues. Um, I, cry, I filed a criminal complaint with the same evidence. I mean, I took the, the you know, the, the chemicals dripped down the wall and puddled on a baseboard. And I managed to do that because it was in a gas form by turning on the steam showers. So the steam went through the whole apartment. And as soon as I did that, it mixed with the gas and it turned into a brown subject that came down the walls, <coughs> ripped off the, the doorways, 
and we have all the pictures of those in the courts. Well, I took the, um, from this baseboard right here, where the pictures are, I don't have the good pictures, I cut them, I took that off and cut it with the substance on it, and I filed it in the district court, filed it in um, federal court, and um, so there was more than enough evidence to prove the whole situation, and I basically, just like the case before you, I was basically just denied access to the courts, and with the most respect to you guys, you know, we the people are very lucky to have you guys, is all I can say. And in this document, it will show um, my feelings on that. And um, so besides all that, you know, my opinion was I was just, oh, I was just denied access to the courts. I'm like, here's an exhibit list of all the documents. We have the um, piece of painted wood, which is, you know, it was, um, chemical substance on the trim board is what it actually should say. And then you have the pipes and the Kodak pictures. The pipe was in the bedroom. When I'm sleeping in the car now because it's just not safe in the house, I brought my telephone out there, the fax machine, to fax to Washington. And I find Bacantis going into my apartment. So I go in there, of course. It's my apartment. You know, it ain't his. I rent it, you know. And um, I find him in the bedroom now and there's a, like a pipe heater, and he's taking it apart, and there's water coming out of it. I'm like, well, what's that from? Oh, you had a leak. So, um, you know, so he, t he cuts out this little bend pot, and he puts it aside, you know, and I'm just, I wouldn't got a camera, and I'm taking pictures of him doing all this. And um, when he t put it down, I took it, okay, and I filed it in the court, okay, but what that basically was, was another method of them to, you know, put that, those chemicals into my bedroom, probably from the apartment down below, which I'm sure they were very involved, which I informed the um, authorities. So, you know, it's in the court, it's right here, and it's, you know, what it was, it looked like it was pressed open, where it was split open. It wasn't a leak, like a little hole from worn out or something, it was pressed open. So it was like a big, long slice. So. That was my bedroom. I mean, every room I went into, the crimes just continued happening. So it was just totally where it was unsafe. Many times I had to go to the hospital, which I filed those, you know, visits. And, um, you know, we just have a serious issue is all I can say. It's a very serious issue. And um, besides that, you know, the, the judgment, you know, basically just talked about me, you know, my demeanor, you know. I, I stood up there and I, I quoted one of these laws, and the judge wanted me to do that right in front of Pagantis, you know, the strict liability laws, I think it was one of the, one about the fence or something, your neighbor and stuff, you know, just one of those laws. So, you know, the, basically the judge, and to me, he was a very, I moved there because he was a very honorable judge for an issue before that. So I had faith and trust in the man, and that's basically why I moved to Groton after all the other stuff that happened. And to see him to just be able to be controlled from outside sources, in my opinion, I don't <coughs> think it was from the evidence, you know what I'm saying? It's really not good. Mr. Mellon, we will, we will read your papers very carefully. Okay. Oh yeah, and then what, there's one last topic. Uh, one last topic would be, you know, I even tried to go to the town of Groton to their Board of Health. Is this a separate case? This is still Bigantis. Okay. And because, like I said, there's no laws and they kept trying to avoid it being a crime and kept trying to say it's a environmental issue. So I, you know, I went to the, the Board of Health. This is what the town of Groton has, a Board of Health out of Andover, no, out of Ear. And the guy would not do anything. So I got the laws that said he has to when I made a request. He still wouldn't. And then I went in front of the town board meeting and they still would not do a thing about it. So, like I said, we got an issue. Thank you, Mr. Mellon. Thank you.